we are asked to find an equation in spherical coordinates for the rectangular equation x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals zero. If we graph this rectangular equation in three dimensions, it gives us this double cone here where we have one cone above the xy plane and one cone below the xy plane. There is more than one way to rewrite this equation using spherical coordinates. To begin, to begin let's add z squared to both sides of the equation, which gives us the equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared. One strategy might be to add z squared to both sides of the equation, which would give us x squared plus y squared plus z squared on the left side of the equation, which we could then substitute with rho squared. But instead of doing this, let's go ahead and use these three equations here and perform a substitution for x squared y squared and z squared. For x squared, because x equals rho sine phi cosine theta, if we square both sides of this equation, we can substitute rho squared sine squared phi cosine squared theta for x squared. Let's go ahead and perform this substitution. And then for y squared, because y equals rho sine phi sine theta, if we square both sides of this equation, we can substitute rho squared sine squared phi sine squared theta for y squared. Let's also perform this substitution. And then finally on the right side of the equation for z squared, because z equals rho cosine phi, if we square both sides of this equation, we can substitute rho squared cosine squared phi for z squared. And let's also perform this substitution. Notice now the equation does only contain rho, phi, and theta, and therefore it is a spherical equation. Let's work on simplifying this equation. Looking at the left side of the equation, notice how these two terms have the greatest common factor of rho squared sine squared phi. Let's go ahead and factor this out, the two terms on the left. Factoring out rho squared sine squared phi leaves us with the quantity cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. On the right side, we still have rho squared cosine squared phi. Using our trig identities, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta simplifies to one, and therefore the equation simplifies to rho squared sine squared phi equals rho squared cosine squared phi. Now for the next step, let's divide both sides of the equation by rho squared cosine squared phi. Simplifying on the right side, notice how rho squared divided by rho squared simplifies to one, and so does cosine squared phi divided by cosine squared phi. And therefore the right side of the equation simplifies to one. On the left side of the equation, rho squared divided by rho squared simplifies to one, and sine squared phi divided by cosine squared phi simplifies to tangent squared phi. Now we do have a simplified spherical equation for the given rectangular equation. However, let's continue and try to solve this equation for phi. If we take the square root of both sides of the equation, the square root of tangent squared phi is equal to tangent phi, and on the right side we have plus or minus the square root of one, which gives us plus or minus one. Having a tangent function value of plus or minus one should remind us of a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle. So if we sketch this on the coordinate plane, we know tangent is positive in the first quadrant. So if we sketch a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle in the first quadrant, it would look something like this, where the two legs would have a length of one and the hypotenuse would have a length of square root two because tangent phi is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. This angle here is pi over four radians, and therefore one solution is phi equals pi over four radians, but tangent is negative in the second quadrant, so if we sketch the same reference triangle in the second quadrant, now this leg has a length of negative one, this leg is positive one, and the hypotenuse is still square root two. Again, the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side is negative one, and therefore the angle of the terminal side here does have a tangent function value of negative one, and this angle 
is pi minus pi over four radians or three pi over four radians. And therefore phi can also equal three pi over four radians. So if we try to solve the equation for phi, we actually need both of these equations because remember phi is the angle formed by the points on the surface and the positive z-axis. And therefore phi equals pi over four is the top cone and phi equals three pi over four is the bottom cone. To better understand this, if we go back to the graph one last time, here's the angle phi equals pi over four radians. So if we think of rotating this ray about the positive z-axis, it gives us the top cone or the cone above the xy plane. And for phi equals three pi over four radians, the terminal ray is this ray here. If we rotate this ray about the z-axis, it gives us the bottom cone. Notice how the angle formed between the negative z-axis and this ray is pi over four radians, but phi is measured from the positive z-axis, giving us phi equals three pi over four radians. I hope you found this helpful.